Today we're talking about the Focus RS all-wheel drive system and a little bit about how it's different from Subarus. Everyone's familiar with the Subarus, but the RS has a, in my opinion, somewhat unique all-wheel drive system. And I feel like most people that drive these cars don't really stop and think, how does it work? Because it's actually a little more complex than you think, but simple to understand. And I want to share it with you. So let's get this thing up in there and show you around. POV, you have my eyeballs. Let's walk to the front. What do we got going on? So right away, oil pan, oil filter, AC compressor, intercooler piping, boost tubes, whatever you want to call it, transmission, rear motor mount, sway bar. This is where the all-wheel drive system kicks in. So you have a PTU, power transfer unit, right? You have connected to that axle, goes to the passenger front, axle to the driver front. So this PTU power transfer unit has both axles and the center drive shaft attached to it. So if you look through here, drive shaft, then we follow the exhaust and we'll start to see the drive shaft. If we turn around, there's a carrier bearing right there and that goes up to the PTU. Computers attached to that that have algorithms that help it decide how much power to the front and rear, follow the drive shafts all the way to what's called the RDU, rear drive unit. This has clutch packs in it. This is like a rear diff, but it uses clutch packs to decide, hey, how much do we want to send power wise and torque wise to this driver's side rear wheel versus this axle going to the passenger side rear wheel. It's that simple from a hardware aspect, but from a programming ECU computer nerd aspect, it gets really crazy and not something that you can easily explain. I, I don't even feel confident in trying to explain it other than the basics, which I'm gonna run you through. We're gonna go a little deeper, but a good upgrade, if I were to keep this car forever, I would love to do, it'd be a pain to do, is in this setup up front. You can swap out the differential so it has more bite limited slip upgrade and that would be cool and it would make this thing drift like an actual rally car instead of more like an open diff right now and that's one thing too i want to talk about really quick is why have we not made videos on drift mode with the rs simply put i did it once i had fun didn't record it but you have to send it so deep and aggressive into the slide it just felt so forced i was like i can tell that this car doesn't love drifting. It definitely needs that differential upgrade and the guys at Mountain Dune told me that to like really be able to enjoy it and like the car to be happy. So I was like, you know what? It's such a nice car. I don't plan on keeping it forever and I wanna pass it off to the next owner with like the best possible condition. I I've had plenty of fun sliding around my STI, which is great. So I'm like, I'm good. I can see people getting curious, but it's not like a, it wasn't anything special. It really does need that differential. But back to how the all-wheel drive system works. Let's go to my desk. The thing too about all-wheel drive and drifting is it doesn't matter what car it is, like on pavement, full grip, it's just hard on the car. And I'm such a sis when it comes to that type of thing. I just like my car so nice. If it was off-road, I would have no mercy because it's just so much less load on the drivetrain when you don't have a ton of grip and you don't feel bad at all. The car doesn't drive different when you get back on pavement. There's lots of fancy names out there for all the all-wheel drive lingo, but I'm gonna keep this at a fifth grade level because that's all that matters. Normal driving conditions, believe it or not, for fuel efficiency reasons, they program this car to mainly send all the power to the front wheels around town and in freeway driving situations especially. Less load, easier for the motor to rotate the front two wheels than all four. You get better gas mileage, why not, who cares? But it's always thinking, I mean, it has its own brain. So if it needs more grip to the rear wheels because it feels like it's losing traction, it's actively knowing what's going on no matter what drive mode you're in. And it's gonna send power to the rear wheels. One individual, both, two at different speeds. It's crazy. You can think of normal mode as just normal sport mode. It's gonna get a little bit more sendy with the amount of torque and power it sends to the rear wheels. Track mode's even more aggressive. And then drift mode, it tries to send as much power to the rear as possible. And the outer wheel specifically, I believe, to 
help you slide around. Here's the one area I think everyone should be aware of because it's so common with new car technology is torque vectoring. Two different ways we can do torque vectoring. We can do brake torque vectoring, brake based torque vectoring specifically. The all wheel drive can use the brakes to apply pressure to a certain wheel or wheels to help the car rotate in corners and gather more traction. It doesn't even have to be a corner, it could be a straight line and it'll feel slippage on one wheel, slow the wheel speed down and the car will track and kind of grip up and straighten out again. Then you have active differential torque vectoring where it's sending different amounts of power to individual wheels to get the car to track or react a certain way or break loose for that matter, depending on what mode you're in. How does the car make these decisions? It has programming in a computer and it bases the decisions off what it's seeing in the sensors. You've got wheel speed sensors, steering angle sensor, acceleration and yaw sensors. And yaw is basically like when the car is sideways drifting or in a rally situation, you're not trying to drift, but the car is just sideways and you're pulling out of a corner. And yaw just, turning in general too. So the Ford engineers, they build out an algorithm to say, hey, this is what you need to run off of. Here's how to make decisions based off of what you see. They do all the testing and do fine tuning. And it's similar to the idea of tuning an engine. You're just tuning the transmission and all the wheel speed sensors, acceleration, yaw, steering angle, to just all communicate a certain way and make calculations that way. Now, advantages and disadvantages. Advantages is it's very fast. It can keep a car stable when maybe a human doesn't have the ability to do that, driver mod needed. In most rally cars to be competitive, you almost need to get rid of all of those ECU commands and just put power down to all the wheels all the time and let the driver decide. Because specifically with the RS, I know you don't see it being rallied for many reasons, suspension travel and such, but talking to Tim O'Neill, over at Team O'Neill Rally School. He's a big Ford guy. He has like three RS's himself. And he says it gets really difficult because with the RS, you lack suspension travel that's needed. But the all wheel drive system, the clutches and the RDU can get hot and then it doesn't, it just throws it into like a lint mode basically. And sometimes the algorithms with the way the all wheel drive system works, it limits. Like you'll get off access sideways or trying to get the car to rotate in certain ways and the ECU just freaks out because it's like the algorithm doesn't know what to do so it just puts it in like limp mode. So with the clutch packs in the RDU that are helping decide how much power to send in one wheel or the other, that fluid in there can get super hot when the car is getting hammered on and rallied for an extended amount of time. Once it gets to a certain temperature, it wants to shut down and go into limp mode. You have a certain amount of yaw with steering angle it goes oh we don't know what to do <laughs> lint mode and so there's a game to be played when building a rally car and choosing specific ones you want one that doesn't have limitations with the ecu and the all-wheel drive system so that alone it just it's it's a challenging all-wheel drive system to try and override for a normal person it's really easy to just go get a subaru and put a motec ecu on it have a tuner program everything you don't have to deal with trash control stability control advanced track all that just shut off you're good to go, the car will do what you want it to do, and it's all up to the driver to just put the car where it needs to go, and the car is just gonna put power down all the time with something simple like the symmetrical all-wheel drive system where it's just mechanical. Engine, transmission, center differential, rear differential, at four axles, so all four wheels, you're good to go. The RS, with it being kind of like a Haldex system, like an Audi, not to get too complicated here and rant, but clutch packs in the rear, fluid heating, it's just, it's more complex. But keep in mind, for a daily driver going out to the hills, you wanna slide around, like, this car can do it all for the most part, for most people, so it's a great car. I don't hear anyone ever complain about the all-wheel drive system, it works really well. It's amazing how much grip you get compared to a Focus ST. So it's definitely not something that I wanna sound like I sh you know, should be talked down upon. It's just, it does have its pros and cons. It is a little bit different. It is really, really cool, depending on what you use it for. And who knows how long these will be reliable for all wheel drive system, but based off of driving it and everything I hear, it seems like for what most people do, the car all wheel drive system shouldn't give you any issues, change the fluid, clutch packs are healthy, you're not hammering on it all the time, drifting, heating up the rear end. It seems like a really solid setup. I hope that gave you some confidence to know how the Focus RS all-wheel drive system works. If you want to know a little bit more info about the car and what to look for when you're thinking about maybe buying one because you're really interested in it, you're wanting to learn everything you can about it, obviously, check out this video right here. 
have everything that I have in my head going over of what I'd look for when I go shopping for an RS.